Did you know you can change how a nav mesh agent travels along the path to their destination? In this video, you're gonna see how I made the enemies in my chicken defense micro game run away from the llamas to make them feel more responsive. Hey, Chris here from Llama Academy, here to help you. Who, me? Yes, you. Make your game dev dream become a reality by helping you make more responsive AI in your game. One of the most common complaints about the built-in navigation system with Unity is that the nav mesh agent avoidance isn't good or doesn't exist. And out of the box, there is agent avoidance. It definitely exists. They use a system called RVO or reciprocal velocity obstacle to handle that avoidance. And now we don't get all like the nitty gritty fine grain control that we would get if we made our own system. Whenever Unity first implemented this, RVO was pretty much the standard. Now we have things like RVO2, a new iterative improvement upon RVO that solves some of those problems that we see with the RVO implementation. And now we're not gonna do a full RVO2 agent implementation in this video. We are gonna look at some ways that we can control how a nav mesh agent moves along their path to give them a little bit more dynamic feel. On the nav mesh agent, we have a property called desired velocity. The desired velocity includes any avoidance slowdowns that the agent is currently considering. We can dynamically control the agent's actual velocity, that's nav mesh agent velocity at runtime based on the environment around that agent. And that's the core of what we're gonna look at in this video. This is another video in the series where I'm covering a bunch of different mechanics implemented in the chicken defense micro game that is freely available to play on itch and the full source code is available for free on GitHub. Let's go ahead and look at how do we make the snakes and foxes run away from those llamas. Okay, so in our game, we can spawn some llamas and we'll have some enemies spawn towards the edge of the map. Let's try to find one. Here's a snake. we we'll bring the llama over here. We'll see some interesting behavior of this snake. So he's going in a straight line right now, but as he gets a little bit closer, the llama gets closer to him and he starts actually moving away from the llama instead of just still moving along the path and making sure he doesn't run into the llama. He instead actually actively moves in the opposite direction. Our fox over here is gonna behave a little bit differently, but similarly. So as the llama gets over here, he slows down and he'll still try to go around. But as the llama gets closer, he very quickly starts even speeding up to try to run away and get away from the llama. So it seems like that might be a challenging thing to do. Let's check out the code to see how it's implemented. Both our fox and snake are doing the same base behavior. I'm using a state machine using Unity HFSM, Unity Hierarchical Finite State Machine. So we have this enemy move state class. The key piece of code that we have here is on logic, which is called every frame in my case. We're gonna find the target move location, which is finding an egg or a chicken that they wanna go to or just a random point nearby if there's none available. We'll set the destination to that target, and if there's no nearby enemy llamas, which we find out through an on-trigger enter event with a sphere collider radius, we'll take a look at how that works in just a minute. We'll just return, meaning we're not gonna manipulate any of the path or anything like that. But if there are some llamas nearby, we're gonna find the direction to the closest llama by taking the llama position minus our current position, then we're going to manipulate the agent's current velocity based on their desired velocity and moving in the completely opposite direction of that llama. So if we know the direction towards the llama, we can use the negative direction towards that llama to go in the opposite direction. And we can use the agent speed. And then I have also a scriptable object that configures why the fox moves away so much more quickly than the snake, because the snake and fox both move relatively slowly. So this runaway config speed multiplier allows the fox to move faster than the nav mesh agent base speed. And for that lerp time value, we have also on the scriptable object a run complete completely away distance, X and Y, which is a little bit weird to understand right now, but we're gonna walk through a couple of examples. So if our runaway completely away distance X is something like two and Y is seven, if the direction to the closest llama magnitude, that's just how far away are they? If that's two, we'll get zero here. And so we'll still keep moving at our normal velocity. With those same numbers, if the llama is only one unit away, we'll have time as about one over seven, which means we'll still be mostly moving in our target direction, but also slightly away from the llama. We can play with these numbers to get very different results. That's how we see the fox get that cool effect. This is just manipulating properties of the nav mesh agent based on the environment around it. 
Having a runaway config defined in a scriptable object like this allows us to very easily play with the values in the inspector while decoupling it from the main enemy scriptable object. If you've watched my gun series, you've seen I've done very similar things. And also if you watch the AI series where we set up enemies with attack configs and that kind of stuff, we're following the same pattern. So our Fox has a runaway config and they're set up as four and six with up to two times faster than their base move speed. The snake, on the other hand, starts moving away a little more aggressively because that Y value is two, even though their min distance there is a little bit lower at five, but their max speed is one all the time. So they never move any faster. It's just a matter of how much in the opposite direction from the llama are they moving. We can see this a little bit more easily if we disable the nav mesh agent at runtime. The snake is going to keep his distance based on that scriptable object. And once he's clear, he'll resume his normal path straight to those eggs. Now, if we place the llama in the path of the fox, we'll see very similar behavior. The fox will just start inching around the llama. But if we move the llama closer, we'll start seeing the fox move more quickly away. And once they're at the safe range far enough away, they'll start trying to get around the llama once again. And you can see the snake doesn't really move any faster. They just eventually would get stomped on very easily by the llama. And an important component of this whole process is seeing the nearby llamas. Nearby llamas is a list of nav mesh agents for nearby llamas. We have something called a target sensor, which is just a mono behavior with a trigger collider sphere on it. And whenever an object enters, it will raise an event. And whenever an object exits, it will raise an event. And we handle those enter and exit events here on our snake and fox by adding to our nearby llamas list that nav mesh agent as it comes in and we sort them by distance. Whenever a llama exits, we just remove it from our list. You can of course do a lot more complex logic than just find the nearest llama and start moving away from it to make your AI even more robust against some tricks like maybe trying to make them run into a different llama. Some other logic you may need to include in your game is doing some nav mesh raycasts to find the bounds make sure you don't just run into a wall. We didn't really have that problem in this game because it's pretty much just a big flat open plane. But if you have hallways, you probably need to do some raycast to find the bounds. If there's a wall in the way, you might need to also track nearby other agents so you don't just run into them and have them not run away as well. Maybe you need to consider if there's a door, all kinds, there's a whole bunch of stuff you can consider to make the agent more aware of the world around it. But what I hope this did was give you at least a starting point to get into more advanced AI movement behaviors. If you got value of this video, make sure you've liked and subscribed to help the channel grow, reach more people and add value to more people. If you did get value from this video and you wanna show your support, there's a few ways you can do that. First, you can get yourself some Alam Academy merch here on YouTube at the YouTube store. Second, you can use the affiliate links down in the description that gives me a small percentage of the purchase price at no additional charge to you. That helps me out a tremendous amount. Even if you're only spending a couple bucks, that's really helpful. Third, you can donate on itch to the project to show that you really support this project and are happy that it's a free open source micro game. You can do a super thanks here on YouTube, or you can even become a Patreon or YouTube member. Those last two will get you access to a private discord where you can hang out, ask me questions, see what the rest of the community is working on. You'll also get your name up here at the end of every video and a shout out starting at the awesome tier like Ivan, Ifiabolus, Perry, Mustafa, and Jerematic. There's also all of these great supporters as well. Thank you all for your support. I am so incredibly grateful.